Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to start a project. So this is obviously the first place that you need to start when you make a game or any other project here. Now in Construct 3, and specifically game development, it's a little bit different than, let's say, another programming language. So let's go over that right now. The first thing we need to do is click this new project here, and you'll get the new project window. The first thing you can do is you can type in the name, and we can just say, for example, test game or the cool word is proto typing game and one thing I like to do is I like to add in a production number like p01 p02 and every time I save it I increase that number by one that will help you out because sometimes if your program crashes later on then you can go back to one of the previous saves and this is something that I highly recommend you also get the option to uh, set your size now the lower you go the higher the pixel rate or the higher the resolution of the game is now if you the, the higher you go on this list the lower resolution so let's select a good one here and the one that I like to do is a 720p this is a good one for learning and your goal right now when you're first starting game development is to not to make a very high resolution 4k game you just need to learn the basics and learn how to make games fun now there's two basic modes we have uh, landscape and portrait landscape obviously means that the width is greater than the height and portrait is the opposite here you also have the aspect ratio so if you're making an older style game older TVs had a different aspect ratio this is the relation between the width and the height or the height and the width respectively and you either, if you want to make a mobile game that can be viewed in portrait mode then you obviously click portrait so that's basically what you need to understand here the orientation here you should lock it into whatever orientation that you pick you don't have to, but it's a good idea. You also have the option to start with a script or event sheet. The eventing system in Construct 3 is absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best uh, in the business here. And the last option is op optimize for pixel art. If you don't have, uh, or if you don't making a game with pixel art, you don't really need to click that. All it does is it makes the pixel art look a little bit more crisp. Okay, let's go ahead and push create. And here is what Construct 3 is. Now, on the uh, we have a bunch of different windows here and one of the things and the number one question that I usually get uh, when I uh, start teaching people things uh, in game development is do I need to know what every single one of these items does right And if I click the menu here do I need to know every single item here and the answer is you should only learn the things that you need to, to learn because game development and software development is very very complex and sometimes you might not even use everything right so the the things that we need to look at are um, and one of the things we can look at first is the project hierarchy here now this is a folder system and this folder system has all of the items that you need to make a game so in game development uh, and specifically construct game development you have a layout and this is what the uh, what people see so for instance if I push um, I believe it's the alt key or the Apple key uh, and you use your scroll uh, you can actually see this is the entirety of the game and you're probably noticing this uh, this dotted line here now what this is is this is the actual screen so if I push the play button we've now run the screen now of course uh, there's nothing in there uh, right now uh, and you're wondering why there's a dotted line and why there's a thick red uh, thick line and gray etc well this basically is what the camera or the view screen will see and we can of course change that but the reason why there's more than uh, one kind of uh, area here is because if you think of a game where your character might move outside of the current viewport into something else like a whole level like if you're imagining a game where a character moves from screen to screen you need this extra room to actually put in your level develop uh, development there so what you can do uh, is for example if you click on this uh, layout sheet here um, you can see that there is the size and this is of course the width and the height right and if, for instance, uh, you click on the game here, you'll notice that the viewport size, and that's that dotted line here, by the way, it's the viewport. So the viewport size is 1280 by 720. So if I go ahead and click this here and paste it here, 
copy and paste it, you'll see that the viewport changes here. Now, one of the things I highly recommend when you're first making games is to actually make games that are only one screen. This should be your first uh, kind of uh, exp uh, exploration into game development. Making big, long games that are like RPGs or that have many levels, etc. You don't want to start there because you need to learn the basics first. And if you can make one screen really good, then you can start to make more screens good. But if you can't make one screen fun or enjoyable or playable, then what's the, uh, then how can you make a, a bigger game? Well, and so this is what a lot of game developers do to start. Make small, a lot of small games and those, a lot of small games will uh, make you a better game developer later on. So there's two real parts here. Now this is where we would add in a, uh, all our objects here, characters, backgrounds, etc. Now to add in the actual code, we use this event sheet, right? And basically this event sheet here, uh, you can actually see it uh, here. What it does, is it has an action um, or it has an event and an action. So in this case here, if we had a bullet that collides with the monster, the monster and the bullet get destroyed. So this can be something like um, unloaded, play sounds. It can be unloaded, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that we can do here. Okay. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add in some objects and just do some basic event sheet logic.